My administration is reclaiming America's heritage as the world's greatest spacefaring nation. The first step in returning our country to the moon and on to Mars. The next place for humans is Mars. That's all there is to it. Well, I am worried about Mars. The building blocks for life are all over Mars. By the mid-2030s, I believe we can send humans to orbit Mars and return them safely to Earth. China, which is launching its first solo expedition to potentially find evidence of past or present life. And the message is clear. The sky is not the limit. China has planned its own Mars sample return mission in 2028. That's enough to blow your mind right there. We have all these rich guys, they love rockets. Reaching Mars is so important, China's long march into the ranks of the world's leading space power is finally complete. China's Tianwen probe Mars landing marked an important step in the country's interplanetary exploration. Mars is an excellent place to investigate whether life existed elsewhere in the universe beyond Earth because it is the most similar planet to Earth in the solar system. While life arose and evolved on Earth, Mars experienced serious climate change. Samples of the atmosphere could reveal crucial details on its formation and evolution. It's just so profoundly exciting to me and uh, and to others on our team to be able to be directly looking for life on another planet. Um, it's just a sort of a once in a lifetime opportunity. Who will be the first nation detecting signs of life on Mars? This will be a deciding factor in the race to Mars. Well, I am worried about Mars in this sense. Um, when I was the NASA administrator, we discovered that Mars is covered in complex organic compounds. The building blocks for life are all over Mars. Life very well could be discovered on a world that's not our own. I'm not saying it's going to be, gotcha. I don't know. But if it is, it should be the United States and our partners and allies. That's who should be doing it. We are in a space race with China. They are aggressive, they are good. Uh, they are now the second nation to have landed successfully on Mars, a rover which is going to gather a small sample and in the future they will try to return it to Earth. China's Tianwen-1 mission, consisting of an orbiter, a lander, and a rover, was launched on the 23rd of July, 2020. Get ready for the ride of your life. This is the nerve-wracking, bone-chilling descent to Mars, starting now. August 2, 2020, the Tianwen-1 successfully carried out its first orbital correction. Continuing on to September 20, its second orbital correction, its third orbital correction. Let the photo capturing begin. Tianwen-1 had traveled 400 million kilometers. On the 5th of February 2021, it captured its first image of Mars including its fourth orbital correction. Flying above the skies of Earth, Tianwen-1 entered Mars orbit. 
sending back amazing images. The orbiter continues to wrap itself around Mars The CNSA flirted with the public with these two magnificent photos of Mars. Pay close attention because China is mapping Mars right before your eyes. We have touched down. How's that for China's National Space Administration mission to Mars? The lander carrying solar-powered Zhurong rover touched down on the south part of the Utopia Planitia, a vast plain in the northern hemisphere of Mars. Mars landing are uniquely challenging. They require heat shielding, thrusters, and supersonic parachutes. This is a teeth-grinding experience that NASA has dubbed the Seven Minutes of Terror. Mars is hard, you know, uh, landing on Mars especially is hard. It's been called the seven minutes of terror. It is enormously daring because this is China's first interplanetary probe and that they're going to deploy a rover. For China, um, this is partly science. Um, the Chinese have said that great powers contribute to wealth and human knowledge. But it is also prestige. Um, because this is being accomplished under Xi Jinping, it is being accomplished under the Chinese government. It is a statement of China's ability to rival other major powers. Rover is conducting experiments studying Mars topography, geology, and the atmosphere. It peered deep under the surface of Mars, finding evidence of two major floods that probably shaped the region. Surprisingly, the Zhurong is equipped radar imager which can probe up to 100 meters below the surface. The solar-powered Mars rover is able to enter dormant state to survive Mars' winter's cold. Temperatures reach minus 100 Celsius during the night. Zhurong has a few tricks in its design to help it withstand the challenges of winter temperatures and a sand or dust storm. The rover is expected to resume activities again in December once it'll be able to autonomously detect the improvement in solar energy levels and power up once more. China's Tianwen-1 Mars mission has been awarded one of the space flight's world most prestigious awards. The mission carried out a historic first ever combined orbiting, landing and roving in a single launch. The fact that the Tianwen-1 ever made it to Mars is remarkable, as it was China's first solar interplanetary mission. No nation had ever attempted to send an orbiter and a rover to Mars on the first try. But China succeeded, making Tianwen-1 a historic victory. China is only the second after the United States to successfully place a rover on the planet. The United States of America sample return mission is complicated and with no funding. They have the Perseverance rover, which is currently seeking promising samples from eventual return to Earth. The other parts of the mission, estimated to cost around $5 billion, have yet to be funded or built. They're also delayed. In March, NASA postponed the return to 2033 from 2031. The U.S. Congress is yet to fund NASA's request due to budget limitations. This funding is needed for the infrastructure to accomplish the sample return mission. In China, since you have a continuance of a Communist Party of China, its ability to focus on one mission spans 10 years. It's time to save what we can, spend what we must, and live within our means once again. NASA, that means scrapping a $100 billion program proposed by the previous administration of President George W. Bush. Beginning no later than 2008, 
we will send a series of robotic missions to the lunar surface to research and prepare for future human exploration. Instead, Obama's budget promises $19 billion for the space agency. If the glory days of American daring do beyond Earth orbit will ever return. In the U.S., the, the problem is that you have a change in perspective with a change in administration. Obama said that we do not need to go to the moon anymore. We've been there before. I am 100% committed to the mission of NASA and its future. But Constellation was hugely late and over budget. And two months ago, Obama scrubbed it as mission impossible. Suddenly you have Trump come in and he argues that, no, we need to go back to the moon. It's a moon to Mars. The United States is still talking about getting somewhere first in space. The point is what we're looking for is not just to continue on the same path, we want to leap into the future. By the mid-2030s, I believe we can send humans to orbit Mars and return them safely to Earth. Yet Obama's outline is just that, with details on where, when, and how to fly still TBD. The first woman and the next man on the moon will both be American astronauts, launched by American rockets from American soil. The U.S. does not seem to realize that because it banned any kind of space collaboration between the U.S. and China, China developed its own indigenous capacity. So they turned a disadvantage into an advantage. A mission in 2031 is to bring back the samples. That is an impressive technological achievement and two years earlier before the ISA plans to do the same. With a little luck, they might even contain the evidence of life that the U.S. scientists hope to discover with their own samples. This should serve as a reminder that China is a great geopolitical rival with even greater ability and ambitions to shoot for the stars. If you've liked what you watched in today's program, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching Reportify Media. Mars 2020 and Mars sample return are primarily motivated by this really fundamental uh, science question, are we alone in the universe? It's very clear that Mars could have supported life in its distant past. Uh, people have been asking a question like this for as long as there have been people.